Dear friends, welcome to Inquest. In this video, let's discuss about 18th October 2021 daily current affairs useful for your UPSC, KPSC and all other competitive examinations. So let's see the index of today's discussion. So first article is related to hunger index. So recently there has been a release of global hunger index ranking. So out of 116 countries, India ranks 101. So this is poor ranking. So this poor ranking is devoid of ground reality and facts. So says the government of India. So in this article, let's see how this global hunger index is going to be measured. Article number two, US-India ministerial dialogue adds focus on climate finance. Now what is climate finance? Climate finance is nothing but the finance made by other countries to India, for example, to you know, come up with the policies that can uh, you know uh, uh, mitigate the global warming or you know greenhouse gases. So this is the reason why. So there is a dialogue between US and India with respect to climate finance. So here we need to recall the you know the norms of UNFCC also. So this is what we're going to be learning in this article. So how UNFCCC is related to this particular dialogue. So article number three, Food Tech Summit 2021 organized by the Ministry of uh, Food Processing Industries on World Food Day. So let's see the objective of this summit when World Food Day is celebrated and the theme of this year's World Food Day. Article number four, India's first national database on unorganized workers. So, so far, there was no official portal to maintain the database of unorganized workers in India. Now, for the very first time, eShram portal has been launched and this is going to maintain the national database on unorganized workers. So let's see the advantages of this portal. Article number five, NASA launches first probe to study Jupiter's asteroids. So let's see the purpose of this launch. Article number six, Army Air Defense Steps of Procurement. So let's see what are all the things that are going to be procured and from which countries. So that is very important for your examination. So with this, let's get into the article number one, Hunger Index, Poor Ranking, Devoid of Ground Reality and Facts, says the government. The government challenged India's poor ranking in Global Hunger Index 2021 and the methodology used calling it Devoid of Ground Reality and Facts. The index rank India at 101th position out of 116 countries. India is also among 31 countries where hunger has been identified as serious. So there is one more list wherein they're going to list or uh, bring together all those countries where hunger is going to be you know, uh, decided as a, a serious problem. You know, among those 31 countries, so India is also there in that list as well. So if you look at the previous ranking, India ranked 94 among 101, you know, 107 countries. So looking at this ranking, this year's ranking, that means the ranking of 2021 is worse than the previous year, according to Global Hunger Index. Now, the government uh, calls this as an un unscientific method. The publishing agencies of the Global Hunger Report, Concern Worldwide and Wealth Hunger Elf, have not done their due diligence before releasing the report. So this is the statement given by the government. The methodology used by FAO is unscientific. What is FAO? Food Agriculture Organization. The method they used is unscientific. Now, what is the method they actually used? They have based their assessment on the result of four question opinion poll. So there are just four questions. And that is based on opinion poll, which was conducted telephonically by Gallup. So Gallup is actually American uh, public opinion analyst. So as per uh, his, uh, you know, the research, so the research, you know, this uh, survey has been conducted. So according to index, only 15 countries fare worse than India. So just 15 countries are behind us. All other countries are ahead of us with respect to this GHI. So you can just pause the video and look in for other countries which are behind India. And India was also behind most of the neighboring countries. So this is what is important. So we are worse than our neighboring countries like Pakistan. It was placed at 92. Nepal and uh, Bangladesh, they scored the same ranking that is 76 and Sri Lanka at uh, 60, you know, fifth position. So looking at all our neighboring nations, our global hunger index is the worst. So if you just look at the graph here, so almost around 18 nations are at uh, rank one 
and we are at 101th rank and ahead of us we have pakistan we have bangladesh and we have nepal and very a uh, few number of countries which are behind us so if you look at the year wise comparison so in the year 2020 we were at 94th position now we have fallen to 101th position now let's see how this uh, uh, you know global hunger index is going to be measured so each country's global hunger index score is classified by cvrt that is how severe the hunger index is from low to extremely alarming so it start from low and scales up to extremely alarming condition the global hunger index scores are based on the values of four component indicators component number 1 is called as undernourishment so this is lack of balanced diet basically next child wasting so wasting is nothing but low weight for their height so compared to their height they will be weighing less and child stunting stunting is nothing but low height for their age compared to their age they will be of less height and child mortality so that is death of children so on these four components global hunger index scores are going to be valued and now from where these data are going to be collected point number 1 under nourishment data are provided by the food and agriculture organization and child mortality data are sourced from the united nations interagency group for child mortality estimation and child wasting and stunting data are drawn from the joint database of unicef the world health organization and world bank among others so this is how the data is going to be collected so with this let's go to the article number 2 us india ministerial dialogue adds focus on climate change dear friends we have made one video on the earth summit so in the earth summit so we have spoken about unfcc so under this unfcc we have spoken about different categories of countries that are like uh, annex 1 countries annex 2 countries and <clears throat> non annex you know countries so non annex countries and india is in the list of non annex countries so usually the countries which are still developing will be put under non annex countries and the countries which are developed and that can finance other countries will be put in annex 2 countries so uh, if you want to know more details about it you can click on the i button on this video to check the complete details of unfccc and its funding pattern so according to the norms of unfccc the annex 2 countries are supposed to fund non annex countries to take care of mitigation programs like climate related issues and uh, the policies related to you know climate mitigation programs so in this regard us and india ministerial dialogue adds focus on climate finance so finance minister nirmala sitaraman and us treasury secretary janet ellen met for the eighth ministerial meeting of the us india economic and financial partnership so in this eighth meeting the ministerial held a session dedicated to climate finance for the first time as per the joint statement in the run up uh, to the united nation climate change conference that is conference of parties uh, which is going to be held in uh, you know glasgow this year so you know it is expected to be uh, held in the month of uh, november actually so that is called as uh, cop26 because this is 26th conferences of parties so it is going to be held in glasgow at the end of the month india has been pushing for rich countries to meet their paris accord climate finance commitment of 100 billion dollar per year so according to paris accord climate finance commitment so we need to generate 100 billion dollar per year so that is basically is going to be sourced from annex 2 countries as i told you before so since uh, this cop is very close by now india has been pushing very hard for the rich countries to meet their paris accord climate finance commitment so the two sides reaffirmed the collective developed collective developed country goal to mobilize 100 billion dollars annually for developing countries for public and private sources in the context of meaningful mitigation actions and transparency on implementation the the funds are basically going to be used for meaningful mitigation actions so this is very important at the same time any action that is going to be taken that should be transparent and tangible so that is the requirement so finance mobilization pillar of the recently launched climate action and finance mobilization dialogue 
under the us india climate and clean energy agenda 2030 partnership so india has been under pressure basically including from us and uk to provide a deadline to reach net zero emission so we are supposed to provide deadline for net zero emission and we are under pressure including from us and uk so india has so far not made commitment beyond its paris related goals has argued that rich countries must move towards net minus commitment so now what is net minus commitment for uh, you know rich countries that means the countries which are there in annex 2 countries for net minus net minus in the sense so they also do lot of uh, mitigation activities at the same time they need to fund those countries that are there in non annex countries so that is what we are pushing for so that is termed as non minus commitment to reach our zero emission net zero emission commitment so this is what is the article is all about article number 3 is related to ministry of food processing industry food tech summit 2021 organized by the ministry of food processing industries on world food day to commemorate world food day so that was uh, you know actually observed on uh, 16th of october every year the ministry of food processing industries under the pradhan mantri formalization of micro food processing enterprises that is in short called as pm fme scheme organized the food tech summit on 16th october 2021 the food tech summit 2021 aimed at setting the stage for all food tech stakeholders to impart discuss and acquaint micro enterprises on the new emerging trends in food processing and technological invention so this is basically to make the stakeholders that are related to you know food production or uh, all the stakeholders to know the trends or emerging trends with respect to food processing and technological innovations and about uh, to more uh, to know more about uh, pmfme that is uh, you know the pradhan mantri formalization of micro food processing enterprises so this has been launched under atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan the pradhan mantri formalization of micro food processing enterprises this scheme is centrally sponsored scheme that aims to enhance the competitiveness of existing individual micro enterprises in the unorganized the segment of the food processing industry and to promote formalization of sector and provide support to farmer producer organizations so this is basically to produce support to farmer producer organizations self help groups and producer cooperatives along their entire value chain with an outlay of uh, rupees 10000 crore over a period of 5 years from 2021 to 24 25 the scheme envisions to directly assist 2 lakh micro food processing units for providing financial technical and business support for upgrading of existing micro food processing enterprises so this is the basic objective of pmfme scheme so with this let's talk more about world food day so this is an international day celebrated every year worldwide on 16th october to commemorate the date of founding of the united nations food and agriculture organization in 1945 the day is celebrated widely by many other organizations concerned with hunger and food security including the world food program the world health organization and the international fund for agricultural development the world food program received the nobel prize in peace in 2020 so this uh, you might be knowing so in the year 2020 nobel peace prize was given to world food program uh, and the reason being for their efforts to combat hunger contribute to peace in conflict area so we are, you know uh, there was an article that we discussed uh, in one of the previous editorials where it was titled as you know food is peace so food is peace that means food, the food avoids lot of uh, internal disturbances in a country so that's why you know maintaining uh, this uh, food or uh, you know making sure every citizen uh, ha has access to adequate food is very important because that can avoid lot of conflicts in a country so that is the reason why world food program has been awarded with nobel prize and for playing a re lead role in uh, stopping the use of hunger in the forms of weapons for war 
and conflict so any country that is of with greater uh, hung, hungry or greater hunger index might lead to lot of internal conflicts it might be used as a weapon for uh, for war and conflict so that's why this is very very important to maintain the hunger index of every nation so since 1981 world food day has adopted a different theme each year in order to highlight areas needed for action and provide a common focus so fao food agriculture organization issued world food day medals medals each year to commemorate and promote the anniversary so most of the themes revolve around agriculture because only investment in agriculture together with support for education and health will turn this situation around the world food day theme for the 2021 safe food now for a healthy tomorrow so this was the this is the theme of world food day for the year 2021 so with this let's go to article number 4 so this article is related to ministry of labor and employment so more than 4 crore unorganized workers registered at eshram portal so this is india's first national database on unorganized workers so by registering so what are all the benefits that they are going to get by registering the unorganized workers will be able to get the benefits of government schemes very easily workers in uh, diverse occupations such as uh, constructions apparel manufacturing fishing zig and uh, platform work you know street vending domestic workers agriculture and allied transport sectors have registered at the portal that means these are the unorganized sectors that are going to be added into this particular portal so in of, in some of these uh, you know uh, uh, you know sections an overwhelming proportion of uh, migrant workers you know are also engaged all the unorganized workers including migrant workers can now take the benefit of various social security and employment based schemes through registration at the he shram portal so when uh, you know such people register any government scheme and available you know availing the benefit of the same becomes very easy for them so otherwise it becomes a very tedious process the largest number of workers registered is from agriculture and construction so among all those unorganized sector most registrations have happened in the sector of agriculture and construction that indicates the given the sheer volume of these two sectors in employment generation in india so that indicates that these two areas that is agriculture and construction you know seems to have uh, more generation of employment in india after registration at eshram portal the unorganized worker shall receive a digital eshram card and they can update their profiles particulars through portal or through mobile application they will have universal account number so henceforth they will have just one number that's called as universal account number that will be acceptable across the country and now they will not be required to register at different places for obtaining social security benefits so if there are any social security benefits related they need not produce anything this universal account number is enough for everything if a worker is registered at uh, eshram portal and meets with an accident he or she will be eligible for 2 lakh on death or permanent disability or 1 lakh on partial disability so there is an insurance also provided on this under this portal so if anybody that you know if they have registered in this portal if they meet with an accident they are eligible for 2 lakh on death or permanent disability or 1 lakh on partial disability so these are all the benefits of this portal so with this let's go to article number 5 NASA launches first probe to study Jupiter's asteroids. NASA launched a first of its kind mission to study Jupiter's frozen asteroids. So you need to remember the name. So the asteroids that they are going to be studying is called as frozen asteroids. Two large crust, you know, cluster of space rocks that scientists believe are remnants of primordial material that form the solar system's outer planets, as per the Reuters reports. the space probe dubbed lucy and packed inside a special cargo capsule lifted off on schedule from cape canaveral air force station in florida it was carried aloft by an atlas v rocket from united launch alliance that is in short called as ual a joint venture of boeing co and uh, lockheed martin corp 
Lucy's mission is a 12 years expedition to study a record number of asteroids. So its journey will be lasting for about 12 years. So now it will be the first to explore the Trojan. So this is for the very first time they are trying to explore these Trojan asteroids. Thousands of rocky objects along with that, they are orbiting sun in two swarms. One ahead of the path of the joint gas planet Jupiter and other one is behind. So one will be ahead of uh, this giant gas planet Jupiter and other one will be behind. The largest known Trojan asteroids named for the warriors of Greek mythology are believed to measure as much as 225 kilometers in diameter. So this is huge actually. Looking at this uh, you know, uh, measurement, it is 225 kilometers in diameter. Scientists hope Lucy's close-up flyby of seven Trojans will yield new clues to how solar system's planets came to be formed some 4.5 billion years ago and what shaped their present configuration. So till now we have uh, one particular theory that is uh, Big Bang Theory, but this uh, research is going to add more information to the formation of solar system, which is believed to happen 4.5 billion years ago. So with this, let's go to article number six. Army Air Defense Steps of Procurement. Now, what are all the new procurements under Army Air Defense? After several delays in the modernization process, the Army Air Defense, that is in short called as AD, is looking at major progress in next few months in terms of deals and trials. These include additional indigenous Akash surface to air missiles. So this is indigenous one. Uh, in short, it is called as SAM systems and under development medium range surface to air missile that is called as uh, MRSAM and uh, IGLA S very short range air defense systems from, from Russia. So the army had uh, you know contracted a small number of IGLA S system from Russia. So this is from Russia under emergency procurement through the vice chiefs emergency financial powers and deliveries were expected soon. The army has two Akash regiments right now in service and negotiations are on for two more. Contract is expected to be concluded by January, an official said. Akash is the indigenously designed and developed medium range SAM system with range of five kilometers. So these numbers are very important. So they will be expected, you know, such points will be expected in the examination. So the point to remember here is, Akash is basically indigenous one and uh, it is, uh, you know, medium range uh, surface to air missile and its range is uh, just five kilometers. In addition, the army variant of uh, MRSAM being jointly developed by the Defense Research and uh, Development Organization, DRDO. So this has been developed in, uh, you know, collaboration. One is, uh, you know, our own organization that is DRDO, other one is Israel Aerospace Industries is nearing induction with the final stage of trials scheduled to be held in uh, next few months. It is uh, in the penultimate stage of induction and uh, air defense functions at three levels, gun missile system, medium range and high range. Within this, the you know air defense guns are of two types. Uh, one is air defense gun missile system, other one is air defense self-propelled guns. The army is looking for guns in both the categories. In the medium segment, it has the indigenous Akash, you know, SAM. So surface to air missile. So this is uh, the medium segment one. Then while we have uh, MR SAM fits in the high range. And uh, last month, the first deliverable firing unit of uh, MR SAM system was handed over to the Indian Air Force, which can engage targets up to the range of 70 kilometers. So that's why it is uh, known as high range uh, you know system so with this uh, we are concluding all, all the articles of uh, today so if you have any questions you can definitely put in comments box we will be more than happy to answer to your questions thanks for watching namaskara